A few years ago, Chronicle happened upon some mysterious huts hidden away in the woods west of Route 128. A mad assemblage of tree limbs, piles of stone, construction debris, all festooned with trinkets, figurines, and random curiosities. See, the forests around us aren't just filled with sticks and stones and bugs and mud. Nope. Wander around out here long enough and you're bound to come across something unexpected. And that's just what we've come looking for. Weird stuff in the woods. This is Chronicle on WCVB Channel 5. J.W. Oker likes walking in the woods well enough. Woods are beautiful, They're, they got waterfalls, pretty trees. But really, <laughs> after so many steps, I get a little bit bored, right? It's like tree, 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 tree. But throw something unusual into the mix, and ochre's unstoppable. If you have a place you're going, a ruin, an old old site, some, some piece of history that you're headed toward, I can walk for like miles. Today, this hunter of hidden oddities is on the trail of big game. This is a good one, this is a really good one. You pull off the side of the road, you take maybe a hundred steps into the forest, and you're surrounded by animal cages. We are in, and I'm gonna give you a really interesting phrase here, the ruins of a depression era zoo. That's right. Tucked away on some conservation land in Farmington, Connecticut, the remains of the former Shade Swamp Sanctuary. A dozen cages line a popular hiking trail, remarkably intact a half a century after they last hosted overnight guests. Some have been smashed by trees, but it hasn't been heavily vandalized. I think it's still somewhat obscure, even in 2020 and 2021. Oker is a collector of curiosities, the author of several books, a podcaster, and host of a website, Odd Things I've Seen. This abandoned zoo in the middle of the woods, one of his recent finds. It is ghostly. It's, it's, just, it's abandoned cages. So cages have all kinds of, you know, uh, baggage just by themselves. Even though these are animal cages, but still cages are very scary things. So you just put them out in the middle of the woods, cover them in leaves and broken branches, and you've got yourself an eerie sight. Meanwhile, I've set off on a hunt of my own. We're gonna kill ourselves here. That's all right. It's all in the interest of science. There is something hidden here in these woods in Sturbridge. We bend around again like that. Eric Kristoff has agreed to help this newbie find his first geocache. Using GPS coordinates found on the geocaching.com website, we're looking for a container of some sort hidden in these woods. In Massachusetts, there are over 16,000 geocaches. The easiest way I describe it is it's just like a treasure hunt. Geocaches are often quite tiny, with little more than a log for geocachers to sign into. Often, caches are placed in notable locations. This one, found in a clearing in the woods of Shrewsbury, filled with whimsical art objects. We learn this secret garden is the work of an artist who lives in a home at the edge of the forest, Chief Joseph. This is actually one of the first ones I found. And when my kids were little, they loved coming out here. Meanwhile, back in Sturbridge, on the trail of larger game. By any chance, see the camo wrap chest over here? The size of the Pandora's box geocache makes it relatively easy to spot. The hard part is getting it open. Luckily, we do find keys. <laughs> Lots of keys. I'm starting to wonder if my guide is a bit of a sadist. You see, Eric's brought me to one of the state's most difficult puzzle caches. Getting it open requires solving a series of brain teasers. Eric, I was drawn to walking in the woods. I didn't realize there was going to be a quiz involved. Getting through the first lock only gets you to a second. This one equipped with a magnet on a string. Of course, I come up with an innovative shortcut. No? No. <laughs> it's frowned upon. This might take us a while, so how about you leave us alone here with Pandora's box and come back in a little bit. So yeah, you got the little knob there. Wow. 
for Ted. We'll keep an eye on his progress throughout the show. There are local laws and guidelines for where geocaches can be placed. Ted's geocaching guide, Eric, is one of two volunteers in Massachusetts who make sure new geocaches meet those guidelines. Meanwhile, Eric says geocaches are everywhere. He recently tracked one down in a public library inside a hollowed out book. Up next, secrets revealed in a hidden cemetery.